Recording start. You want to introduce your? You want to introduce us, Obi? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Aris of the Sessions, also known as Obi, and uh, welcome to our little FPS today. <laughs> today, uh, I'm gonna be playing Ruby Red. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I am Vamp, and today I will be playing the Feral Sea Child, Umi. Yes. Yes. The feral sea child, yes, good. <laughs> fire and water, fire boy, water boy, and fire girl. <laughs> yes, yes. There are so old that I have to. <laughs> uh, you have done that so many times ever since we've planned this out. Anyway, <laughs> can you blame me? Can you blame me? The reference is right there. It is right there. It is right there, ready for the taking. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Did we talk about who was gonna start? I don't think we did. <laughs> no. Do you wanna? Do you wanna start? I am. Hmm. I am thinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. To everyone listening, we have no idea what we're going to do. <laughs> we literally have no plans. We were just like, take the children and put them together. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Ruby's coming from somewhere, isn't she? Yeah. Um, I guess that's where we can start off. <laughs> uh, Ruby Red. Uh little little girl uh she is arriving in inkwell after leaving her her home in faruma and she is in inkwell because you know what inkwell sounds nice inkwell sounds rad <laughs> inkwell is a good place. Uh, so it is it is indeed <laughs> uh and uh our our story, I guess, begins <laughs> with uh, Ruby having, well, it started a long time ago with Ruby having snuck onto a boat out of Faruma and heading all the way to Inkwell. And, like, just as they were, like, nearing, like, the port, Ruby very much stole a rowboat <laughs> and is literally by herself in the middle of the water <laughs> rowing to shore. <laughs> May I ask, like, can Ruby even, like, steer a boat slash row it slash even, like, use one? She's a smart kid. She's a smart kid. She can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it so happens that the, it so happens that there's another kid, like, in this specific area where Ruby is. Although, you may not see them at first. Row perception. Oh boy, perception. Ruby's great at those. <laughs> Let's just straight D20. 12. <laughs> well, that answers my question. You see, you see, delicious. <laughs> Which makes sense, because Ruby's focusing on rowing the boat right now. <laughs> yeah, rowing the boat is really, really hard. Like, the specifics, like, it's not complex science, but, like, it takes a lot of strength. It does. It does indeed. <laughs> but your determination seems to have paid off, Ruby, because you're, like, approaching what seems to be a pretty empty, like, shore slash beach. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Looks, like, looks pretty, um, yeah, looks pretty uninhabited. Hmm. Hmm. Well... Ruby likes this. <laughs> Ruby very much likes this. <laughs> very much uh, a loner kind of character, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do know what you mean. And the beach <laughs> is like r right in front of you. And um, you're getting pretty close to it now, actually. You have, like, if you were to jump out of the boot right now, like, you'd probably be with, like, what? Waist deep in water, the the waters become more and more shallow. Hmm. 
I think Ruby likes roll Rose like a little bit closer to shore before uh she decides that like there's a good spot to like hop out and then like drag the boat the rest of the way. <laughs> and as you hop out and drag the boat the rest of the way, you notice like on the sand there are footprints. Oh pretty pretty like human looking footprints like it's not it's definitely not an animal that's for sure but the weird thing is it's leading into the water hmm hmm okay well ruby takes one look at that and is like oh is somebody else in the water because that's like very logical conclusions and like ruby's gonna take like another look out in the ocean (laughs) the reception just just take take a gander (laughs) Eight. Oh my Ruby. god. <laughs> you, you're staring so intently out in the horizon looking for someone like swimming in the water that you completely miss it when a Ghiblian kid pops out right in front of you. <laughs> I'm just imagining like five feet away. Ubi's just walking out of the water and Ruby's just like staring out into the sea with, like, a hand over her eyes. <laughs> exactly. And, and like, they, they just go and, like, stand next to you. <laughs> looks over the water, and then looks at Ruby, and then looks back over the water. <laughs> uh... Ruby probably is, like, doing the scanning thing where she's, like, slowly l- turning towards the side. And I'm just picturing her slowly turning until she, like, sees Umi right in front of her. And then she jumps back. <laughs> <laughs> and this kid doesn't, like, doesn't react at all when you jump jumping back. Their expression doesn't even change. They're, they're, definitely, they're definitely a kid, that's for sure. But not real kind like you are, Ruby. A tune kind kid. Ghiblian, maybe? Although you might not know it as that. Like, you might not know the specific term. Yeah, Ruby would definitely not know the specific terms. Ruby is still very much new to this whole tune stuff. <laughs> yeah, and In hold on. Fact, uh, I'm gonna say this right now. Ruby, like, uh, this is Umi is probably only the second tune Ruby has ever seen, so. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, well, they like aside from you know, aside from being very obviously tune kind, and the fact that their hair moves really weirdly. It's like it's mo- it's like they're still underwater, even though they're very clearly standing on the beach next to you and just staring at you. They look pretty normal as tunes go. Hmm. I think like after the initial shot, just Ruby just kind of like looks at Umi, and she's just. She's just squinting. <laughs> just like, whoops, is this? Whoops. <laughs> Umi, seems to, Umi seems to have looked away from her and is actually a salmon in her boat. Hmm. And. Like, hmm? You first. Like, yeah, Ruby just, is just kind of like waiting awkwardly. <laughs> Because, like, she's usually used to people talking to her first before she attempts to communicate. I will say, right here, right now, they're not going to, like, speak first. <laughs> like, they seem very content with just, like, examining, like, Ruby's robot and, like, looking over <laughs> it occasionally. Yeah, yeah. And uh... it's pretty clear they just walked out of the water, considering their whole, like, being a stopping wet. <laughs> I think Ruby just, like, stares at Umi for, like, a little bit before uh, she kind of waves at them. And, like, I'm gonna say right now, uh, Ruby is mute. <laughs> Ruby cannot say anything. So anything I'm saying, she is signing. <laughs> yeah, I should specify this as well. Umi is selectively mute, so unless, like, I, unless I say otherwise, anything that I have them say will be in sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when Ruby waves at them, they they look at Ruby and they wave back. And they sign 
and they signed to Ruby. Hello. Oh man, Ruby is just instantly like, oh, yes, yes, <laughs> because they speak sign. That's good. <laughs> That's good. She it has hit language barriers before, and they are so annoying. <laughs> Like, I do not know, like, the system of signs in Ainquel are, like, in this universe, but I'm, like, figuring that they probably, like, the basics are the same. It's more like they don't, like, team sign has specific words that real kind sign doesn't. Yeah. But Rumi signs hello to Ruby, and when Ruby signs back, they, well, this, their expression still doesn't change, which is kind of disconcerting because expressions are kind of a huge, like, you inside, but you think they might look pleased. <laughs> Ooh. Um, uh, I think Ruby just like ponders for a bit before she's like, uh, so what are you doing out here? <laughs> swimming. There is no forthcoming explanation. They sign that, they look to the boat, and then they sign to her, you have a nice boat. Uh, Ruby just kind of shrugs before she signs back, it's not my boat. <laughs> but thank you, I suppose. <laughs> You're welcome. And then they <laughs> sign, and then they sign, you, you drove this boat and you wrote this boat here. You used this boat. Is that not your boat then? Hmm. Ruby, like, thinks about it for a minute before she's like, you know, you have a point, I suppose. <laughs> to Umi, it's simple. She <laughs> was the one rowing this boat. She is the one, like, near this boat. It is her boat, regardless of who owned it before. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The logic is a little foreign to Ruby, but you know what? She's not going to complain. <laughs> I mean, Umi has a point. Yeah, Umi does in fact have a point. <laughs> and Umi's like, Umi's like looking at Ruby and they sign, you, you came a long way on the boat that isn't yours. Yeah, Ruby nods. You're very young to be a sailor. Hmm. I think Ruby, like, thinks for a bit before she, like, signs back. Uh, not a sailor, but... <laughs> if I rode a boat good enough to appear as a sailor, then I guess I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> hmm. Well, I've seen better. But this is a rowboat. It's not exactly hard to, to navigate. Yeah, it's real easy to figure out. Like, <laughs> Ruby just kind of signs offhandedly. <laughs> huh. Why have you come all this way then if you're not a sailor? Uh, hmm. Ruby just kind of like looks at you for a bit. Can you, like, hmm. Roll insight? I suppose, yeah, roll insight. <laughs> okay, I have to actually look up Umi's stats before I accidentally roll Marcel's insight. Because <laughs> I did that so like many times in my last episode with Umi. <laughs> 17. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, there's obvious, like, hesitation in R Ruby's body language. Like, she's, like, just staring at you kind of awkwardly, like, debating whether or not what she can say exactly before she eventually signs, uh, personal reasons. And Umi accepts it, because they aren't really the kind to, like, pry or, like, delve deeper. Umi says personal reasons? Okay. And speaking of which, like, Umi's probably, like, gone, like, to the edge of the water now and kind of, like, sat down on the sand and dipped their feet in. Hmm. Okay. 
I think going off of like that same insight role, you can kind of tell like as soon as like Umi does not continue to press for questions, like Ruby looks relieved. She looks relieved that she does not have to answer any more questions. She is content with this. <laughs> well then, well then, Sailor, are you going to be long on the shore? Uh, Ruby just kind of thinks for a bit before she goes to stand next to Umi by the water. She hasn't, like, taken off her uh, rubber boots or anything. She's just kind of, like, standing there with uh, her hands in her pockets of her bright red tune kind coat for a bit as she, like, thinks before she signs back. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to hang out here. I know I have to leave soon. Well, okay. until you have to leave. The sea and the shore is free for everybody. Hmm. Ruby just kind of nods in response before she uh, sits down next to Umi and just kind of like stares out at the water. Gosh, like these two are both like really quiet and not to kind of like initiate conversations or questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even know each other's names and they're just like, yeah, we're vibing. Yeah. <laughs> they just straight vibing. <laughs> I'm uh. just gonna casually roll. <laughs> Eight. Okay. Like, Umi, you, and not Umi, Ruby, you mm -hmm. notice Umi reach into, like, the pockets and the shorts and they take out a actually rather large but really pretty conch shell in shades of cream and pink and it definitely doesn't look like it could have fit it in their pockets like this thing is large you would have oh at gosh. least seen the shape or outline of it yeah like ruby is just kind of absolutely looking that and then she go looks back out of the ocean and then she like does a double take and like stares at umi <laughs> Umi is like playing the conch shell kind of like absent mindedly. Like Ruby is just like bug eyed, or at least as bug eyed as a real kind can be. <laughs> and she's just immediately pointing to the shell and just excitedly signing, How did you do that? How'd you do that? <laughs> Umi, um, Umi, uh, sign, Umi signs hammer space, but. Ra Ruby probably doesn't recognize it. Yeah, and Ruby. <laughs> Ruby just stares at the sign. And she's like, "I do not understand that one. You got to help me out here." <laughs> Umi signs hammer space, and then Umi continues signing. It's in my pocket, and then they just kind of look at Ruby and like tilt their head a little. Hmm. Ruby is doing a ponder. <laughs> doing a think. <laughs> to try and roll intelligence to puzzle it on or something. Yeah, that is true. That is true. She does. Or you know, or you, know you can actually ask Umi to explain more. <laughs> Look, Ruby is 13. <laughs> She's going to try it herself before she asks for help. <laughs> he is like, you're younger than Ubi. That is no excuse. <laughs> Look, she's stubborn. <laughs> uh, 14. 14. Well, with a 14, I'd say that you definitely know that this is probably a Toon specific sign. And so, mm -hmm. like, this is probably something that Toons just do. But, like, even if you rolled in that plenty, you're not going to miraculously come up with, like, the name of that sign, like, without any context. Yeah, true. <laughs> All you have to love the 14 is, yeah, it's a tune specific sign. This is probably a tune specific thing and something universal if it, like, makes its way into, like, the sign proper. But that's all you figure out. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good point. <laughs> Uh, I think Ruby, after realizing she can't puzzle it out herself, asks what the sign means. <laughs> and Umi blinks 
and then looks at Ruby again. Like, they knew that she was real kind, but they didn't really, like, think anything about it. Like, okay, Ruby is real kind. They've met real kind before. <laughs> and they just, and they, they signed Hammerspace again. And then they finger spell it. Like, they, they carefully, like, spell every letter of the word. H A M M E R S P A C T slowly and then repeats it again so Ruby can see. Ye. Like Rumi is listening attentively the entire time Rumi. and she like kind of copies it a couple times until she makes she knows she has it. <laughs> and Umi's explanation is it's something all tunes have. It's we can keep it's we can keep anything we want in it. Hmm. And to further demonstrate, further demonstrate, they reach into their pocket and pull out like a raincoat. Which again, they shouldn't be able to put it in their pocket. Oh my gosh. If Ruby could have sparkling eyes, she absolutely would. <laughs> Because this is magic stuff. Magic stuff is cool. She's learning about magic stuff. <laughs> exactly. Although this isn't exactly magic stuff, but it probably would seem like that way. It to might her. as well be magic stuff to her. <laughs> and Umi repeats the hammer space sign again, and it's like really clear that they want Ruby to like repeat it alongside them. Yeah, and Ruby does repeat it. <laughs> And Umi actually kind of like reaches forward and adjusts the hands a little so that it's more accurate. Yeah. I think like Ruby definitely nods gratefully when she has the help and uh, makes sure, like she keeps practicing it for like a solid five minutes. She wants to make sure she has it right. <laughs> when she eventually gets it right, like Umi doesn't really congratulate her or anything. Like they don't really like acknowledge his success beyond uh beyond like uh you got it right regardless ruby is beaming with pride <laughs> uh i think like she looks out at the ocean for like a bit longer before she looks back at umi and asks for their name and umi gives it they their fingers make the letters u m i Nice. <laughs> uh, Ruby repeats it a couple times before uh, she's like, uh, my name is Ruby, like R-U-B-Y. And Umi repeats it, R-U-B-Y. At least, like, it's not, like, different signs, because, like, pretty sure that, like, the figure spelling, at least, even between, like, real kind and tune kind continents still remain constant. Actually, uh, Fun fact about, like, Ruby's sign. She only knows cartoon sign, not the real kind sign. Oh, that's actually... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder why that is, but, um... <laughs> Smiles and they... secrets, anyway. <laughs> oh, that, that's not promising. Anyway... <laughs> that's um, not promising. I can have secret I, lore. <laughs> I know you. That's why, that, that's why I'm smart. Anyway, um, Umi signs Ruby's name once again, and then Han goes. Well, Umi honestly doesn't go do anything. Like, like I said, they're really, really passive. Like, they're just sitting there and like looking over the water and playing their conch shell. Nice. I think sometimes just vibing is the best way to hang out. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Gosh, I'm just like picturing the two of them sitting like next to each other on the beach, just staring out at the water, playing the Ru Umi playing the conch, conch shell, Ruby just kind of vibing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And... <laughs> hmm. Actually, um, Ruby, do you want to roll like, do you want to roll insight or perception or I don't know, even investigation on the conch shell or arcana? Okay. Yes, Arcana. Yes, I could do Arcana. <laughs> Fourteen. Ruby, please. All right, <laughs> you're good at. 
<laughs> Listen, it's not that high a DC anyway, so I'm going to give it to you. Um, so uh, the conch shell that Umi is blowing, like, it's it sounds really nice. And at first you just think, like, it's a normal conch shell. But when you look closer, like, you can actually kind of feel, like, the magic that's, like, weaved into it. It's not just a regular conch shell. It's a spellcasting focus. Ooh. Like, the moment Ruby puzzles this out, you can, like, see her getting excited again. And she's just, uh, signing, uh, do you do magic? <laughs> Umi pauses from where they've been blowing the conch shell. And they sign, sometimes. What kind of magic can you do? And they deliberate for a moment before they blow into the conch shell. And not like not like how they've been playing so far, because what they've been playing so far is like low, kind of wispy, and you know, like kind of like soft sounds. Like if you've ever heard like a conch shell being played, you know what I mean. But like when they blow, it's not like what a real kind conch shell would sound like. It sounds like what you would get if you blew into a fog horn or you know a tune kind conch shell <laughs> yeah and like i can't do a fog horn noise but pretend i did <laughs> yeah i can't do a fog horn noise either but like it's very loud <laughs> and very sudden and like there's magic yes there's like there's magic and like it kind of like drips out of the conch shell and like wisp out and smoke and then a small a small little otter appears. <gasps> An otter! Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's a small tomb kind of sea otter. Ruby is delighted. <laughs> and the sea otter kind of gives herself a little shake, struggling before looking at Ruby. Quick! Ah! Ah! Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Young master, who's this? Who? Who is? Who? Who? Who is this young miss? Uh, Ruby just waves hello before she signs her name. <laughs> oh, 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 hello there, Ruby. I see you made a friend. No, this is just this delightful. I can scarcely contain my excitement. Hello there, dearest. I'm Maggie. <laughs> Maggie? Ooh. I was wondering how you pronounce that. <laughs> Maggie, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> what Mari Umi is actually signing what like what Ruby might take a moment to recognize as a name sign. Ooh. And Umi's name sign for Maji is basically the letter M and the word loud. <laughs> oh gosh. Ruby doesn't laugh, but she like makes the motion like she is laughing as soon as she recognizes that. And uh Maji doesn't get to talk much else because Ruby is immediately attempting to pick them up and pet them. <laughs> and Muddy is just like, why, yes, 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 of course, what a friendly and polite little miss. I'll be perfectly honest, you look like a smart girl. I bet you know exactly how to treat a familiar. Well, see, between you and me, I think you have the makings of a really strong wizard, Miss Red, I really, really do. Oh. <laughs> now and then, it's gotta stay together, do we not? Ruby, like, makes a nod, and <laughs> she is absolutely preening. I have to let you know. <laughs> Her pride. <laughs> and I'll have you know that Maggie is, like, very loud, very bombastic. When they speak, like, there isn't a single pause between, like, any of their words. It's just, like, a run-on sentence. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And, the, and, and as Ruby pets them, congratulations, you have, like, have you ever, like, pet a daughter? I have not, but I want I will to so bad. Right here, I will <laughs> tell you right here, right now, they're basically squirmy ribbons of her. Oh my gosh, are they, like, ferrets? <laughs> that sounds like a ferret. <laughs> ferrets are so good! Ah! I have never pet a ferret, but I have pet otters, and I will I say- I held a ferret in my hands, and they are adorable. <laughs> yeah, they're like, otters are pretty kind of dumb, and they, but they're squirmy when you pet them, and they kind of like give you little nibbles on your fingers. Aww. And Maggie is Aww. just 
two words. They give like they nip at like Ruby's fingers playfully. Not enough to actually hurt, but you know, just like playful nips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and uh, it's just like a stormy ribbon of fur, like on your lap. Ruby, are you proud of yourself? Ruby is very proud of herself. <laughs> You are a spellcaster. Yes, yes, yes. Aren't you? Aren't you? I can feel it. <laughs> Ruby, like, freezes again before she nods, and uh, she thinks to herself for a bit before uh, she gently sets Maggi down and reaches into her picnic basket. And uh, she pulls out, like, this old, tattered-looking spell book. And she's oh, like... She's yeah, she's just showing it off with the biggest grin. <laughs> and Maji is like Maji is nodding. Although they although they kinda of pouted a little when Ruby like put them down. They kinda of like go over to Umi and just climb onto Umi's shoulder and say, Oh, that's that's lovely, 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 lovely book you have there, young miss. Be careful though, we're really close to the ocean and a book that old looks like it'll break apart if you leave it up in the salty air. Hmm. Yeah, Ruby just kind of nods, and uh, she's she started like absently flicking through it, uh, just trying to find the right spell. Because I'm gonna be honest, this is when Ruby is like still first like figuring magic out. <laughs> ooh, ooh! Mayhaps you're going to give us a demonstration of your magic. Oh, 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 oh! Ruby, young master, isn't this exciting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it takes Ruby a little bit to, like, get through the disorganization of her spell book before uh, she finds the spell she wants. And she reads over it for a bit before reaching into her picnic basket and pulling out, uh, like, a number of spell components. Because she doesn't have a spell focus. She has just a whole bunch of things in her picnic basket that she uses to cast spells. Aww. Yeah. So for this spell, it's uh, charcoal, some incense, and some herbs that she does, like, you know, special magic stuff with it. I'm, I don't know how to describe it, but you know what? She does it. and <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and uh, there's kind of, like, a glowing light that appears in front of her before it uh, coalesces and forms a little tune kind pig. <laughs> huh, that actually, like, let me actually links at that because um they honestly weren't expecting a tin kind familiar from a real kind wizard that's for sure but like they like they don't really like they aren't really confused it was just unexpected and they move on and they have a newer cool in mind like <laughs> oh, really real insight <laughs> uh, actually i'm also gonna ask you to roll insight after after this roll too <laughs> all right all right, all right. Uh, where is my insight? There it is. Sixteen. Ten. Ten. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say, once uh the pig appeared for Ruby, she, like, looks confused for a bit before she just shakes her head. <laughs> uh, huh. Like, Umi's not gonna think anything of that, but me, out of character, I'm wondering what that means. <laughs> But, uh, Ruby, you rolled the 16, so you can definitely tell. Like, Ruby's expression doesn't even change. You don't have any idea how you know this, but you're pretty sure that they're looking at all, you're, they're looking at your big familiar, and they want to pet. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The childish desire to pet. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the two kind of pig is just kind of, like, shake his head and his ears make like that you know like that dog ear shaking sound <laughs> yep they make that sound and oliver is just looking up at these two kids like oh um hello <laughs> uh oh. Oh. <laughs> sure. oh so the young miss has her own familiar and who might you be and maggie is just like like maggie has like suddenly like like vacated like Umi's shoulder and it's now like walking around Oliver. Ooh. <laughs> uh I think like Oliver just kind of like spins in place to like keep an eye on Maggie as uh he goes like, oh um well 
talking. Okay, talking's new. Uh, I'm Oliver. Hello. <laughs> now, now, don't look so nervous. We're all friends here. After all, spellcasters have to stick together. Familiars especially so. I'm Maggie. Oh, that, that's, a, that's a lovely name. Um, <laughs> and Oliver is uh, kind of like sticks out a hoof <laughs> for Maggie to shake. <laughs> and Maji sticks out a paw and it's like oh I have no idea how a hoof and a paw shake would work but you know what they make it work they're tunes they make it work yeah <laughs> huh. ah you're so lucky to have such a spirit of young mistress uh Oliver uh just nods in agreement and he's like uh, yes, Miss Ruby is, uh, very intelligent. Uh, I'm still getting used to her. I'm o I've only very recently become her familiar, and <laughs> Oliver is, she sounds a little nervous, but, like, you can kind of tell that's just kind of his personality. <laughs> and Maddie is just, like, laughing a little under her breath. And then she looks over to Umi. Umi, who's, like, Umi, who's looking at Ruby and looking at Oliver. <laughs> Ruby just kind of gets this little smirk before uh, she gestures to Oliver <laughs> as a yes, go, pet him <laughs> and Umi immediately steps forward, crouches down and pets the pig yes, yes I think like Oliver like takes a couple of startled steps back before uh, Umi gets a chance to pet but like the minute, the minute Oliver realizes it's petting, he's just oh, 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 this is nice Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna roll, like, animal handling just to, like, see how well it <laughs> pets. <laughs> no! What? <laughs> it's a cat! <laughs> oh my gosh, you are absolutely spoiling Oliver. <laughs> oh yeah, they are. Like, they've just, like, got sat down cross-legged on sand, and they're, like, probably, like, scratching behind Oliver's ears, just petting Oliver just like clearly knows what they're doing. This is a kid who has pet many, many, many animals before. Yes, good. Good. <laughs> oh, and, Oliver and my, is just melting. <laughs> my, he says, well, 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 that won't do. I, I'm feeling rather left out now. And they say that like they say that like by Ruby's feet, and like it's pretty clear what they're implying here. <laughs> Ruby kind of makes a snickering motion before she bends down and uh, picks up Maggi and starts petting her too. <laughs> Congratulations! You have you once again have a squirmy ribbon of fur in your arms. Yes, yes, good. <laughs> and it's honestly rather ticklish, but you're wearing a pretty thick raincoat, so maybe not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Young miss, young miss, where are you going, young miss? Uh, Ruby just kind of thinks for a bit before she shrugs. <laughs> ah, no destination, a vagabond, no matter wonder. Ah, someone after our own heart, then. Yeah, Ruby just kind of nods, and uh, she thinks for a bit before she signs. I do have to find civilization at some point. I need to know what to f what's available around here. <laughs> Young master can tell you. Umi can tell you. But he seems preoccupied with your little pig. <laughs> Cut to Oliver. <laughs> Just completely lounging in <laughs> Umi's lap. <laughs> Umi looks very... The biggest very grin. <laughs> Umi looks very pleased with himself. Like, like... <laughs> Ruby, you don't know the significance of these, but like the little Ghibli and happy flowers have started floating about their head. Yes. Oh man. Like as soon as like Ruby notices like the Ghibli and happy flowers, she's just taking interest again because ooh, ooh, how did that work? <laughs> she is not used to tune things. <laughs> and Maggie just sniggers a lot and goes, Ah, happy flowers, I I haven't seen those in a while. <laughs> yes, yes, young miss. If you'd like information, just ask my young master there. I will tell you some, but 
You know, street souls look the same when you leave a soul beside you. Yeah. I think like Ruby ponders on this for a bit before uh, she carrying Maggie goes back over to Umi's side and uh, just curiously taps their shoulder. And Umi looks up. They're petting this and stuff. Kind of like tilts their head and the universal gesture of I'm listening. Uh, hmm. I think like Ruby ponders for a bit before. Uh, like she's basically trying to figure out how to word the question, and uh, eventually she asks, "Uh, do you know where like the closest town is? I'm not gonna head over there yet, but I just needed like no general information." <laughs> I have to ask, like, when she signs this, does all of her like translate like out of habit? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Actually, hmm. You know, uh, hmm. I'm thinking of the lore uh, that I have set before this. Uh, Oliver, like, doesn't have, like, the habit of translating yet, but, like, he sees, like, uh, uh, Ruby doing that, and he, like, starts to try to explain, <laughs> like, before, what she's saying, just in case. Before he can finish, though, like, Umi, like, sadly, Umi's hands stop patting because they're, like, going up the sign. Ah. <laughs> Poor Oliver. <laughs> and, and, like, Umi, Umi signs, there is a town nearby. Uh, do you know which direction? And, like, Ruby just kind of, like, gestures cluelessly towards either side of the beach. <laughs> and Umi, Umi ponders this for a moment, because Umi doesn't very often go that inland. Mm-hmm. And Umi just, it's further inland. There is a forest nearby. Ooh, at the mention of forest, Ru Ruby immediately perks up, like, yes, yes, forest, good. <laughs> and, hmm, I think, like, Umi, Umi is gonna pause a little and goes, and goes, um, and goes, hmm. Hold on, I have to think. God, Umi, why the fuck are you so hard to like hard to think of? <laughs> I think Umi can pause and go, um and goes, I can lead you I can lead you deeper. Hmm. I think uh Ruby thinks about this for a bit before she's like, eh, not yet. I kinda wanna stay by the ocean a bit longer. <laughs> and Umi signs, you have taste. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby nods before she uh just sits back down and like looks out at the sea. And um, uh she like thinks for a little bit before uh she signs again and she's like, "You know, about a week ago I didn't know that the water could be that big." And Umi like again, Umi's expression doesn't change, which is really weird, especially since they're communicating in sign. But um, you get the sense that they're kind of like, you know, like they're just, oh, that sounds like a terrible way to live, kind of, kind of like emotion. <laughs> and the sign, not even reverse. And uh, hold on, I have to think. Uh, Ruby just shrugs and she said, like, "No, I've seen like rivers and lakes and stuff, but I didn't know the ocean was so big." Because, like, I heard about the oceans in books and stuff, but, like, I never saw it until recently. You lived further in London? Yeah, Ruby nods. And then Umi kind of, like, Umi's silent a little while before going, well, if you've seen rivers and you've seen lakes, then you've seen a portion of the ocean as small as it is. Yeah. Everything, <sighs> everything begins in the ocean and everything ends here. Ruby like thinks for a bit before uh she just kind of nods and sides you're pretty smart <laughs> thank you <laughs> and they kind of like pause and then like kind of sign 
you're pretty smart as well. But the way, like, it's not, it's less like they're lying and more like you can kind of tell that they they remembered last second that usually you reply to compliments and compliments in kind. <laughs> oh, Humi is so valid. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking, like, uh, Ruby this whole time hasn't, like, taken off her boots or anything, but, like, as she's just, like, sitting there and, like, staring at the water, she is, eventually it made the decision that she wants to, like, you know, like, feel the, feel the water with her toes, so she's, like, tugging off the, the rubber boots, and she's just kind of copying Umi's movements to, like, dip her feet in the water. Oh my god, has Ruby never, like, sat on a beach and dipped her feet in the water? She has not. <laughs> All right. Like, I don't think I should describe this. I'm pretty sure, Obi, have you done this? Oh, I've done it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly how it feels. Like, the cold water between your toes, the feeling of, like, sand under your feet. Like, you know exactly how it feels. Like, the sea foam just, like, like coming up and tickling at the bare feet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, like, it smells of salt water. It smells very strongly of sharp wa- salt water. Wind's pretty strong and it kind of stings, but in a good way. Yee. Yee. <laughs> and as, like, as the both of them just sit there on the shore, like, half in the water, petting, like, each other's familiars, like, the sun probably starts going down as well. And there really is nothing, nothing as pretty as the sunset over the ocean. Uh. Obi? Uh, Yeah, I'm just thinking. (laughs) I feel like as the sun starts to set, like, Umi actually, um, Umi actually moves to get up. Uh, I think, like, like, at this point, Ruby's probably just kind of been real comfy, just, like, s- sitting in the water with her feet. <laughs> and uh, she kind of jumps in surprise as uh, Umi moves to stand up before she starts moving to get up as well. <laughs> Umi's explanation, like, if... Well, they wouldn't explain unless Ruby asked. But if Ruby asked why they were moving, the explanation is just one word. Food. Ooh. Yeah, I think, like, after a bit, Ruby does ask, and once she gets that response, she's just like, oh, uh. <laughs> Has Ruby done anything? Hmm. Well, <laughs> just for fun, make a perception check. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's see, perception, perception. Yes, here we go. Well. Judging by the growling of Ruby's stomach, <laughs> you can probably determine that no, she has not eaten yet. <laughs> and Umi's just, Umi just stares, and you know, like, it's not like Umi has gone, like, Umi has, like, gone to get her food by themselves very often, but sometimes they have friends along, like, sometimes they have others, like, who live near the sea, and they share food together, and they're just Uh, Ruby thinks for a bit before she nods. And I'm gonna roll something really quick. That's oh, that's okay. okay, that makes sense. Mm. That makes mm. sense. I just rolled survival. <laughs> and yeah. Umi nods, and Umi goes, We'll get her. You get her what you can. And Umi disappears into the ocean. Like, and keep in mind, the sun has gone down, and the ocean, like, when it's night, is actually kind of intimidating, because everything gets really dark and really silent, and there's just, like, the wind and the sea. Ooh. And Umi literally just walked in there. <laughs> like, you can't even see them anymore. <laughs> I, pict- I picture, like, Ruby, like, standing at the shore kind of awkwardly for, like, two minutes. Then three minutes, <laughs> then five minutes, and like eventually she starts getting worried because uh, did this kid that she was just talking to drown? 
Then you know, because eventually, like, out of the water, like, out of the water comes, like, the same, like, dark head of hair, and they're carrying fish. Ooh. Ooh. They're carrying quite a lot of fish, and they, like, and they kind of, like, they go onto shore, and they offer it to Ruby. Ooh. I think, uh, Ruby thinks for a bit as she, like, takes some of the fish and, uh, she kind of, like, looks towards the woods that are nearby the shore before, uh, like, if she was attuned, there would be a light bulb going over her head. But she's not attuned, so there's not. (laughs) And, And, uh, um, you first. I think, uh, Ruby, like, very carefully, like, sets down the fish on her picnic basket before she signs, uh, do you think I could gather some stuff too? And Umi just nods, like, why can't she? Hmm? Why can't she? Like, that's, like, Umi's just nodding, like, why not? Just, like, like, and she just kind of signs, like, just in case, like, you already had, like, an idea or to, of what to prepare to eat or whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Ruby just kind of very awkwardly just hurries over to the woods, and uh, I'm gonna roll survival as well. <laughs> okay, I'm, just yes, because I rolled so high, like, in that plenty, I'm gonna <laughs> say that Umi, like, I'm not gonna roll again for Umi, like, just going yeah. along, like, up and down the beach, and like, oh god, I miss Indonesia, but yeah, they're gonna, like, look for little crabs and crustaceans. Yes. Good. Good. Like, like, there are little, like, little small pinpricks and holes. I'm giving you advantage. Like, come on. Ruby yeah. Knows <laughs> Ruby does no woods. She does no woods. Yeah, 17. 17. Okay. I'm going to say, because it was originally an 8, it took Ruby a little bit to get used to these woods. Because, like, real kind woods and tune kind woods are very different. <laughs> yeah, like, but, like, the car mechanics still remain the same. Mm-hmm. And, like, as soon as she gets used to them, she, like, is able to find the things she was looking for, namely, like, berries, uh, edible mushrooms and stuff like that. Like, things you can find, like, in the forest. Yeah. And as yeah. you come back, like, Umi's definitely, like, continued, like, gathering. Like, they've, um, they've gathered, like, they've been, like, they seem to have, like, the system where they, like, they got, like, small crabs from the little holes that they've hid themselves in for the night. And yeah. there's, like, there's sea salt, there's like, there's sea salt, there's fish, there's just like, there's so much stuff. <laughs> Hold on, just for like a cute visual, can we say that like Oliver and Maggie have been helping Umi? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that like Oliver and Maggie has have like actually set up like the cooking like, the cooking like things, because you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing that Oliver, like, once he realized that, oh, wait, they're making food, he went to go, like, gather, like, firewood and stuff. And by firewood, I mean he literally just goes and picks up sticks <laughs> and yeah. brings them back. With the fire, like, burning merrily, and, like, the fish, the fish are being roasted over the fire. And, like, I'm imagining, like, Ruby pulls, like, what they found, like, together as well. So you've got edible mushrooms, you've got, like, herbs, you've got berries. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm assuming, like, Ruby probably, like, found little dandelions that they can make into salads. Yes. And, yes. like, the crabs are being cooked as well. And, um, and there's just, like, sea salt and berry jam. Like, they probably made jam out of the berries. Yes. <laughs> And I'm gonna roll something real quick. Oh, Bumble! Bumble! <laughs> well, Umi, like, Umi, um, Umi, roll, Umi goes into his, um, into their hammer space, and they retract something, but judging by how quickly, like, they put it back in, it wasn't what, like, it wasn't what, um, wasn't what <laughs> they were looking for. It's a what they pulled up was a really pretty green sea green dress. <laughs> and just another yeah. another one. Seven. Okay, that makes it. Um Umi pulls out what they actually like were they were actually looking for, which seems to be a loaf of bread. Ooh. 
like mm. it's that kind of bread that when Umi snaps it, like it makes that crispy like crack cracking noise. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ruby looks like that which we're excited because ooh, bread. Bread. <laughs> bread yeah. <is> good. <laughs> yeah. We probably got this bread from like like actual like friends who live like on land. Or like, you know, from that one village that they frequent often. And just like breaking like they're just like breaking bread from their hammer space and like sharing it with like Ruby and their familiars. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and like Umi at least is like eating the bread with the sea salt, but they're also like using a bit of the berry jam. Yeah. I'm gonna say, whatever they've cooked, Ruby is helping herself. <laughs> And she's, so she's eating like a gremlin. <laughs> like for Ruby, there are familiar tastes, of course, like the dandelion salad, the herbs, like the the berries, the roasted chestnuts. But mm -hmm. the but then there are also like stuff that she wouldn't have gotten back home, like fish and crabs and sea salt. Mm -hmm. Like bread, even the bread is different from the ones back home. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is just, this is such a soft scene. This is, it so is. Soft. It ah. is. And I will admit that's making me hungry. The idea of these two like cooking together on the beach, like pulling together oh, their resources and cooking oh, something like this. It's making me hungry. <laughs> it sounds same. really it sounds really good. It does. It does. It it appeals to the hunter cater instinct in me. It does. <laughs> Sometimes you just have hunter-gatherer instinct. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the night, the fire's burning low. And Umi's like, Umi's, like, the both of them probably eat, ate their fuel. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, Ruby probably ate more than her fair share. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. She deserves it. She probably, like, hasn't actually eaten since she left on the boat. It's been a long day. Exactly. <laughs> it's been a Ruby. long day. <laughs> but, exactly. And like I imagine like once like the food's done, like Umi's just like playing their conch shell like absent mindedly again. Mm. And they look to Ruby and they sign they sign uh, hold on a second. Hmm? Oh, sorry, I thought I died. My laptop screen clacked down. Oh. <laughs> no, you didn't die. <laughs> oh, um, anyway, um, well, Umi looks at Ruby and signs leaving. Hmm. I think, like, after some, like, inward debating, uh, Ruby eventually nods as she like, stands up. And, and she, like, goes and looks towards the woods, and, uh... Hmm. And then she, like, is thinking to herself. Like, as she, like, stands next to the campfire, staring out into the foliage, and, uh... Eventually she just sits back down. <laughs> and she's like, you know what? It's a bad idea to go out in the dark. <laughs> Uh, hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hello? hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah, sorry. It just got quiet and I, I was worried I died for a second. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I was just saying, um, well, Ruby's right. It is dangerous to go out in the woods alone at night. Yeah. And Umi's just, and Umi's just signing, never gone that far inland. But if you follow the river through the woods, you probably will find civilization. Yeah. Hmm. I think like Ruby takes this and nods. Uh, I'm just gonna. Hmm. What would Ruby do? What would Ruby do? She'd, she'd do like the most logical thing. <laughs> And like what? logically, 
Ruby is probably debating whether or not to, uh, like, like, ugh, ugh, Ruby, hard to think, thinking, ah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, Ruby's logic right now is forest is dangerous at night, dangerous to go alone, and she's not going to go by herself. <laughs> So I think at the moment she's just gonna basically camp out here on the beach with Umi if Umi's all right with it. Umi's fine with it. They don't seem to like mind all too much. Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> please, please tell me that like, please tell me that they both fall asleep eventually. <laughs> uh, I I gotta say yeah. <laughs> Like, probably not on each other, because, yeah. like, Ruby doesn't know Umi that well, but, like, they both fall asleep eventually. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, uh, so <laughs> and we could end the FTS here? Yeah, we could. This is seems like a very soft ending. <laughs> it is. But, uh, hmm. I do, I do like to think that uh after uh after like they wake up tomorrow the next morning uh Ruby eventually does make her way to leave for civilization but before then uh she sticks her hand out to Umi to shake <laughs> and Umi stares at it before shaking it. Yeah. <laughs> Would Ruby ask like Umi to meet a Ken sometime? Uh, I think, yeah, definitely. She's she likes Umi's vibes. <laughs> and, and Umi's just, I'll see you, I'll see you, I'll see you in a few days then. Yeah, and Ruby just nods, and there we go. <laughs> there you go. Like they there probably meet again in a few days when Umi just pops <laughs> out of the river that Ruby's traveling along. <laughs> end on that image of just like Umi popping out of the river and <laughs> Ruby just jumping in surprise. <laughs> yeah. oh. There are now two children, Luz and Aigwell, and one yes. of them will soon be Luz in Ruindal. Yes! <laughs> Ruby, oh god. That was a soft FES. Thank you all for listening and thank you for playing it with me. Yeah, thank you guys for listening, and oh my gosh, this was so fun. This was, yes, thank yes. you, Fable. Thank you, Fable. <laughs>